Spawn Camp here. In this video, we'll set up some textures for our test scene and get some damage triggers dealing damage to our player. Let's get right into it. So first, I'll make a folder for our textures. And I'm going to drag in these two floor tiles that I have. You can search Google for floor textures or Doom one specifically if you want. With both of them here, we'll select them both. And then since we're using these as textures and there's no transparency to worry about, we'll keep the import settings mostly how they are, but we'll change our filtering to off. If for some reason you do or need to use these as sprites, make sure to change the pixels per unit until you get something that looks right. And our wrapping mode will be set to repeat so it'll repeat on our material. Next, we'll make some materials. First, in the material folder, we'll create a new folder called environment. We need two materials, one for our floor and one for our walls. Our floor is going to be floor 10 by 10. Now duplicate it and our prototype walls are going to be 50 by 10. Make sure both are white. Drag our floor material on our ground object. Click the material that you just assigned and we'll assign the texture to the albedo slot. Now we'll fix the tiling. So our ground is 10 by 10 so we'll start with 20 by 20. And it's a little too big for my liking, so we're going to go ahead and use 50 by 50 instead. Now that looks good, so let's do the walls. In the environment, game object, create a new 3D cube. Then we'll scale it to 50 on the X and 10 on the Y. Next, drag our wall material on it. And then add our texture to the albedo slot. Scale the texture to your liking. For me it's 10 and 2.5 seem like good values. Now like the floors we'll sign this as static so our nav mesh makes correctly. Move the wall behind our enemy and duplicate it and move it behind our player. With both selected, we can duplicate, make sure the pivot mode set to center, and we can rotate these guys to give us a nice square closed in area. Lastly, we'll duplicate the floor and rename it to ceiling, and we can rotate it 180 degrees on either the X or the Z axis and move it above the player. And we don't need to be walking on the ceiling, so untick static on this guy. Now in the navigation window, we'll clear our bake and hit bake and you'll see our new nav mesh up here. Now with some context to our play area, it'll help code in the enemy AI behavior later on. But for now, let's get some damage triggers coded up, talking about the lava and the green hazard waste that damages Doom Guy when he walks through it. First, we'll disable our enemy, or since it's prefab, we can completely remove it for now. We'll create some new materials for our toxic waste and our lava. Since I'm using some post-processing already, I'll add some emission to these materials. But you can skip this step for later. Duplicate our toxic waste and we'll make this lava instead. Change the color to red. Now in our scene, we'll create a new cube, and we'll name this Toxic Waste. Then scale it to something like 10 on the X, 5 on the Z, and 0.5 for our Y. Then we can reset our position to 0, 0, 0. Drag our Toxic Waste material straight onto the cube. And we'll position this right above the ground. And a quick test to see if our character controller can walk on it. With that done, we'll duplicate our game object and we'll use this one for our lava. Next, we'll select both these objects and tick static at the top of the inspector. And we'll do this because if we go into our navigation window and select object, we can then select not walkable. Then we can clear our bake and rebake. This will prevent our enemies from walking on this while we're still able to. Or omit this step completely and allow the enemies to walk on it and maybe even damage them too. 
Next, on our toxic waste, we'll make a child object called Trigger and add a box collider. This will be the actual volume that triggers the damage on our player, so make sure to tick it as is trigger. Next, we can click the little edit button, and it's hard to see on the screen, but there's little green dots to drag around. We'll make it taller and shrink in the sides so it's a little smaller than the green cube. You can hold control to move both sides at once. Now duplicate our trigger and drag it to our lava object as well. If we reset the position, it should line up with our red cube the way we need. Later on in the series, we'll rebuild E1M1 using ProBuilder, and we'll do something similar for the triggers by duplicating our mesh, turning off the mesh renderer, and using this collider as a trigger. Now we'll hop back on our toxic waste trigger. Let's add a new component, and it's a script that we'll name Damage Trigger. Double click it to open it up in your code editor. First, let's set up some references. We'll need a boolean called damaging player. When this bool is true, we'll damage the player, so we'll need a private player health reference. And we'll just name it player health. Next, we need an integer called damage amount. And I'll default this to something like 10. And we need a float called time between damage. And I'll default this to 1.5F. So every 1.5 seconds will damage our player. And we'll need a private float called damage counter. So in our start function, we'll set our damage counter to our 1.5 damage time. And then we'll grab our player health by using find object of type and player health. Next, at the bottom of our class, we want two functions. The first is on trigger enter, and this passes to us a collider called other. So we'll say if other dot compare tag is player because our player is tagged player and make sure that this is capital P because it's case sensitive. Well, we want damage in player to equal true. Now we want an on trigger exit and the same logic, but damage in player equals false. Now the main logic. So in the update, we'll say if damaging player, then we want to damage our player every 1.5 seconds or our time between damage. So we'll have a counter. So if our damage counter is greater than or equal to time between damage, then we want to damage our player and we'll call damage player function from our player health script and pass in damage amount and since we just got damaged then we'll reset our damage counter to zero now outside this if where we're still damaging the player we just want to keep the timer running up so damage counter plus equals time dot delta time and we use time.delta time to make sure it's frame independent. And if we're damaging player, run this logic. But else, if we're not damaging player, we want to keep our counter reset to zero and ready to start counting. And that's about it. If you want your player to take damage the moment you step in the trigger instead of waiting for the time between damage, then just set the damage counter to it when on trigger enter is called. And now we have a nice big trigger volume that damages our player. You can tweak these values to get the desired effect. With that finished, you can prefab these prototype triggers 
or for me, the script is more important. So I'll just organize it and put it in our miscellaneous scripts folder and use it for later when I'm designing the level with ProBuilder. And since we're done with these for now, you can remove them from the scene and rebake your nav mesh. And that puts us at a good starting point for our next tutorial. Short and sweet damage triggers. Until next time, Spawn Camp out.